This is the news in brief from the United Nations. In Ukraine, at least 972 children have been killed or injured by violence since the war escalated nearly six months ago. That's according to the UN Children's Fund, UNICEF, which said on Monday that an average of over five children have been killed or injured each day since the Russian invasion on the 24th of February. UNICEF Executive Director Catherine Russell noted that the death toll was only the number that the UN had been able to confirm and that the true number was almost certainly much higher. Ms Russell noted that explosive weapons had caused the most child casualties, including in populated areas of Mariupol, Luhansk, Kremenchuk and Vinnytsia, among other places. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has spoken out against the terror attack in Somalia, which left at least 20 people dead and many others hurt after gunmen stormed a hotel in the capital Mogadishu. In a statement, Mr Guterres offered his condolences to the families of the victims as well as the government and people of Somalia. He also wished a swift recovery to the injured and said that he stood with Somalis in their fight against terrorism and their march towards peace. According to reports, security forces battled for more than 30 hours to overcome gunmen who stormed the Hyatt Hotel last Thursday. The development came as the UN World Food Programme, WFP, warned that the number of people at risk of starvation in the Horn of Africa is now 22 million. Successive failed rains across Kenya, Somalia and Ethiopia have caused the worst drought in 40 years and created famine-like conditions in the worst-hit areas. To Iran now, where top UN-appointed independent rights experts on Monday appealed to the state to stop persecution and harassment of religious minorities. The experts, who include Javaid Rehman, special rapporteur on the situation of human rights in Iran, alleged that the number of arbitrary arrests there was increasing. There have also been enforced disappearances of members of the Baha'i faith and the destruction or confiscation of their properties, they said. This policy bears all the signs of systematic persecution, the experts said in a statement which coincided with the International Day for Victims of Acts of Violence based on religion or belief, which is marked annually on the 22nd of August. Daniel Johnson, UN News. This is the news in brief from the United Nations. Reports that Russian authorities and affiliated armed groups in Ukraine's Mariupol plan to put prisoners of war on trial in the coming days could be a war crime, the UN Human Rights Office, OHCHR, said on Tuesday. The development comes after photos and video footage published in the media appeared to show metal cages being built in Mariupol's Philharmonic Hall, apparently to restrain captured Ukrainian soldiers during legal proceedings. OHCHR spokesperson Ravina Shamdasani said that international humanitarian law prohibits the establishment of courts solely to judge prisoners of war. She added that a lack of independent access to these detainees left them exposed to the risk of torture to extract a confession. We've examined videos, for example, one in which a captured serviceman from the Ukrainian armed forces was beaten, castrated, shot and killed uh, by men who appear to be members of uh, Russian armed forces or affiliated armed groups. We have reasonable grounds to believe that this video was not staged. The UN Human Rights Office spokesperson also highlighted public statements by Russian officials and affiliates that had described Ukrainian soldiers as war criminals, Nazis and terrorists, undermining the presumption of innocence. Health authorities in the Democratic Republic of the Congo have declared a resurgence of Ebola virus. The announcement came late on Monday evening after confirmation of one case of the highly transmissible disease in the country's eastern province of North Kivu. According to the UN World Health Organization, a 46-year-old woman died from Ebola on the 15th of August in Benitown in North Kivu. She'd been treated in hospital where blood samples confirmed that she had the same strain of Ebola as the one responsible for the 2018-2020 outbreak in North Kivu and Ituri provinces the country's longest and largest encounter with the disease, which is endemic in DRC. Although Ebola flare-ups are occurring with greater frequency in DRC, WHO's Regional Director for Africa, Dr Mashidiso Moeti, said that the health authorities in North Kivu had stopped several previous outbreaks and would no doubt bring this one under control quickly too. The last episode of Ebola in Beni in December 2021 lasted about two months and claimed six lives before it was contained. 
To Myanmar, where it's been five years since more than 700,000 ethnic Rohingya fled military persecution from neighbouring Bangladesh, and where the UN Refugee Agency, UNHCR, on Tuesday appealed to the international community to help them. Far greater financial support and solutions for Rohingya men, women and children are needed today, the UN agency said, particularly in the vast Cox's Bazaar camp complex in Bangladesh. It's now the world's largest refugee camp with almost one million stateless Rohingya and conditions are extremely overcrowded and in some cases dangerous, said UNHCR spokesperson Shabia Mantu. Protection needs, especially for women, children and people with disabilities, are often underreported. Violence against children and women, especially gender-based violence, is shrouded in stigma that can render survivors voiceless and unable to access legal, medical, psychosocial or other forms of support. Some have resorted to dangerous boat journeys to seek a future for themselves and their children. UNHCR reported that many Rohingya want to return to Myanmar, but only when it's safe to do so, and as long as they can move around freely and have access to citizenship. Today's response plan for Rohingya refugees and host communities in Bangladesh who are also in need of humanitarian support is only 49% funded, with $426 million received so far this year. Katie Dartford, UN News. This is the news in brief from the United Nations. Six months since Russia invaded Ukraine, the UN Human Rights Monitoring Mission there reported on Wednesday that more than 5,600 civilians have been killed in the conflict so far. That number is very likely underestimated, as these are only the deaths that UN investigators in Ukraine have been able to confirm. In a statement, head of the UN Human Rights Monitoring Mission in Ukraine, Matilda Bogner, said that more than 360 children had died since the 24th of February, and 92% of all casualties were caused by explosive weapons used in built-up areas. Ms Bogner noted that prisoners of war have been tortured and ill-treated, and she called for access to those held in areas controlled by Russia or affiliated armed groups. The military coup in Myanmar has left the country's civil society and workers' unions facing an existential threat, the UN labour agency ILO has said. 18 months since a military junta took power, ILO said that trades unions and activist groups face targeted persecution, including arbitrary arrest, detentions, acts of violence, raids on homes and offices, seizure of equipment, threatening phone calls, interrogation and surveillance. The result has been to substantially limit the ability of civil society and trades unions to operate, which ILO credited with increasing labour protections for workers in the last decade. The UN agency described the current situation as a genuine threat to their existence and called for the international community to respond. To Nigeria, where stigma against people with monkeypox has discouraged them from seeking care. That's the worrying message from UN AIDS in Nigeria, where recent weeks have seen a significant increase in the number of suspected and confirmed cases of the disease. The UN agency said that local staff had met people who were too afraid to seek medical help, while also noting that the scarcity of key medicines was holding back Nigeria's monkeypox response. More medicines, equipment and sample collection gear are needed, UNAIDS insisted, adding that unlike the US and EU, Nigeria did not have a stock of vaccines against the virus. Daniel Johnson, UN News. This is the News in Brief from the United Nations. Armed men in Tigray have stolen well over half a million tonnes of fuel from the UN World Food Programme, WFP, which said on Thursday that it will be impossible to continue the agency's aid work without it. The development came as hostilities fled in northern Ethiopia after a five-month truce between federal forces and separatists. An estimated 5.2 million people already face severe hunger in Tigray. In a statement condemning the fuel theft, WFP Executive Director David Beasley called on the Tigrayan authorities to return it immediately. The fuel was stolen on Wednesday morning when 12 tankers were driven out of WFP's compound in Mekele. It had only arrived days earlier, said Mr Beasley, who warned that it would no longer be possible to distribute food, fertiliser medicines and other emergency supplies across Tigray. Because of the resumption of fighting, millions of people will be pushed further into hunger, the WFP chief said. 
It's been five years since more than 700,000 ethnic Rohingya fled from Myanmar to Bangladesh to escape a military crackdown. Today, Myanmar's human rights catastrophe continues to worsen, UN Human Rights Chief Michelle Bachelet said on Thursday. Speaking in Geneva, Ms Bachelet said that Myanmar's Tatmadaw forces had maintained and even escalated operations against civilians in residential areas in southeast, northwest and central regions, 18 months since they overthrew the government. The use of air power and artillery against villages and residential areas has also intensified, the UN Human Rights Chief said, while also warning that recent spikes of violence in Rakhine State, which is the historic former home of ethnic Rohingya, could upset the relative calm in the region, and that the last fairly stable area of the country may not avoid a resurgence of armed conflict. Rohingya communities have frequently been caught between the Tatmadaw and the rebel Arakan army fighters or have been targeted directly in operations. Over 14 million need humanitarian assistance. The use of cluster munitions in the war in Ukraine has left at least 689 civilians injured or killed. That's the latest from the UN-partnered Cluster Munition Monitor Civil Society Group, which alleged on Thursday that Russian forces had repeatedly launched unlawful attacks using the weapon. Ukrainian forces had also reportedly used cluster munitions several times, the group said in its 2022 report, which found that the weapons had been mostly used in populated areas. In addition to killing and injuring civilians, cluster munitions have damaged homes, hospitals, schools, factories and playgrounds, the civil society report said. In total, cluster munitions killed 215 people in Ukraine and injured 474 this year, although the 2010 Oslo Convention bans the use, production, transfer and stockpiling of the weapons. This preliminary total is the heaviest toll from cluster bombs recorded in recent years. The last highest toll dates back to 2016, when there were more than 800 victims, the vast majority in Syria. Daniel Johnson, UN News. This is the news in brief from the United Nations. The UN's top aid official in Ukraine on Friday issued an urgent appeal for guarantees from Russia and affiliated forces to allow humanitarians to deliver absolutely necessary relief items across the contact line. Speaking from Kharkiv in northeast Ukraine, where shelling has intensified in the last week, UN resident coordinator Denise Brown said that the UN was constantly negotiating for access up and down the line that divides those fighting the war in the south and east. Mrs Brown also said that she had no way of confirming what relief items, if anything, Russia had reportedly sent to non-government controlled areas. We have to help people wherever they are uh, and I'm hopeful that uh, the Russian Federation will provide the security guarantees that we require to go across. That's all we want to do. Provide insulin to the hospitals, provide blankets, provide mattresses, fuel if we can. Repair windows and doors. It's not complicated. The UN aid coordinator also warned that winter is fast approaching in Ukraine and that she did not believe that vulnerable communities in the east and south had what they needed to survive. Many elderly people are living in damaged houses and the lack of access to gas or electricity in large parts of the east could be a matter of life or death if people could not heat their homes, Mrs Brown said in a statement. Further indications have emerged that life-threatening drought in the Horn of Africa will likely continue for a fifth year and impact millions of people, the UN World Meteorological Organization, WMO, said on Friday. The warning came after a long-range forecast for October to December issued at the Greater Horn of Africa Seasonal Climate Outlook Forum indicated high chances of drier-than-average conditions across most parts of the region. WMO spokesperson Claire Nullis told journalists in Geneva that in the past, the October to December rainy season usually contributed up to 70% of annual rainfall in equatorial parts of the Horn of Africa, particularly eastern Kenya. But this weather model shows with a high degree of confidence that a fifth consecutive failed rainy season in the Horn of Africa is underway. This has contributed to what WMO has called an unprecedented humanitarian catastrophe developing in Ethiopia, Kenya and Somalia, which are expected to receive significantly below normal rainfall totals from now until the end of the year. 
Sri Lanka's economic crisis has become so bad that families are now regularly skipping meals and one in two youngsters needs emergency assistance. The alert from UN Children's Fund UNICEF on Friday comes as Sri Lanka continues to suffer its worst financial slump since independence in 1948. Staple foods have become unaffordable, warned UNICEF's regional director for South Asia, George Leria Ajay, who pointed out that severe acute malnutrition in Sri Lanka was among the highest in the region before the current crisis. Mounting economic pressure has resulted in increasing abuse, exploitation and violence against children. An increasing number of impoverished families have had no option but to put their children into institutional care, the UN agency said. If the dire economic situation continues, hard-earned progress for children in Sri Lanka is at risk of being reversed and in some cases erased permanently, UNICEF warned. Katie Dartford, UN News.